Hi everyone, my name is Liza Thanchanon and I'm the Regional Counsel for Health at Legal Services of Northern California. We're a nonprofit legal aid organization providing free civil legal services to low-income people in 23 Northern California counties. Today, I'll be giving an overview of public benefits programs that provide income supports. I have three goals for this training. One is to show you that there are many income support programs for different situations. Two is to teach you buzzwords to listen for when you are screening patients for eligibility for one of these programs. And my third goal is to encourage you to seek local resources such as your local legal aid organization to help your patients with getting onto the benefits they need. So I'll start by giving a quick overview of cash benefit programs, meaning these are programs that provide cash to eligible people. On the next slide, I'll go over programs that provide non-cash benefits, such as medical care and food benefits. I've listed these programs by the category of people they're meant for. The first category is people with disabilities who might qualify for supplemental security income or SSI. Next is people with work history who might qualify for unemployment insurance benefits, social security retirement benefits, or private pensions. Next is people with disabilities and work history who might qualify for state disability insurance or SDI or social security disability insurance or private disability benefits. Next is people with families, meaning people with minor children who might qualify for CalWORKs. And then for immigrants, there's CAPI, which stands for Cash Assistance Program for Immigrants and RCA, which stands for Refugee Cash Assistance. And the last category is people with no other eligibility in the categories we just went over. Those are folks who might be eligible for general assistance or general relief. I'll go over each of these programs in more detail in just a minute. Non-cash benefits are not the primary focus of this training, but I wanted to give a quick overview of what's available. For food benefits, there's CalFresh, also frequently called food stamps. And for healthcare benefits, there are a number of programs available depending on your work history, income, and needs. These programs include Covered California, Medicare, Medi-Cal, in-home supportive services, and county indigent healthcare programs. I'll go over those briefly later in the presentation. Okay, so really quickly, before we jump into more detail, I wanted to show you this Venn diagram to help illustrate the relationship between some of these programs that exist for people with disabilities, people with work history, and those who have both. In the left circle, there's SSI, which is a program for people with disabilities who do not have any work history. In the circle on the right, there's UIB, which stands for Unemployment Insurance Benefits, and SSR, which is Social Security Retirement Benefits. These are programs for people who have a work history but don't necessarily have a disability. In the overlapping section, there's SDI, which stands for State Disability Insurance, and SSDI, which stands for Social Security Disability Insurance, which are basically programs for disabled workers. I hope this graphic helps you understand how to categorize people for purposes of screening for these benefit programs. And now I'll go over each of them in a bit more detail. The first program that's up is SSI or Supplemental Security Income. This program is administered by the Social Security Administration. To be eligible for it, folks must be disabled, blind, or over age 65 and have low income and assets. The asset limit is $2,000 for an individual. Folks on SSI will have no or limited work history. This is because if they had significant work history, they would likely be on state disability insurance or social security disability insurance instead, which might have a higher benefit amount. The SSI benefit amount varies state by state, but it is currently $1,133 per month in California. Folks on SSI can also get CalFresh benefits and will have automatic eligibility for Medi-Cal. Now we're moving on to our next category of benefits for people with disabilities and work history. Up first in this category is State Disability Insurance, or SDI. This program is administered by California's Employment Development Department, more commonly called EDD. To be eligible, the person must be unable to work due to disability, and their employer must have paid into the EDD system. The benefit amount the person gets is based on their earnings in the base period, and they can receive benefits for up to one year. Next is SSDI, which stands for Social Security Disability Insurance. This program is administered by the Federal Social Security Administration. 
To be eligible, the person must be unable to work due to disability, but I want to note that the disability standard for Social Security is a lot more stringent than it is for state disability insurance, which is the last program we just went over. So it's a lot harder to qualify as disabled under the Social Security standard than the EDD standard. For this program, the person must also have a significant work history and paid into the Social Security system. I know the work history piece sounds very vague, but the amount of work history required really depends on the age at which the person became disabled. And for this program also, the benefit amount is dependent on how much the person earned when they were working. Last in the category for people with disabilities and work history is private disability benefits. Many jobs provide private disability benefits that people sometimes forget about, so if you see someone in this situation, it's always a good idea to ask them to review their employment benefits to see if there's any private disability insurance policy provided by their employer. Okay, now moving to the next category of people, which is people with work history but no disability. The first program is Unemployment Insurance Benefits, which is administered by the California Employment Development Department. To be eligible, your employer must have paid into the EDD system. If that's the case, then you're eligible if you're unemployed through no fault of your own, you have sufficient earnings during the base period, and you are actively looking for work and able to accept work. The next program is Social Security Retirement. To be eligible, you have to have a work history and paid into the Social Security system. You can take early retirement benefits starting at age 62, which means you'll get a lower benefit amount, or you can get your full retirement benefit at your full retirement age, which is generally 66 to 67. And lastly are pensions. If folks have any significant work history, there's a chance they have a pension from a previous employer floating around out there that they've forgotten about or lost track of. This happens really often, so it's a good thing to check if someone mentions they have a work history. So just showing this Venn diagram again to show the programs for people with disabilities, programs for people with work history, and the people and the programs for people who overlap those categories. Okay, next set of programs is for people with families. Again, that means people with minor children. The first program is CalWORKs, which is cash aid for low-income families. To be eligible, folks have to be low income, meaning under 130% of the federal poverty level, and have less than $10,000 in assets. Folks on CalWORKs will automatically also get CalFresh and Medi-Cal. And then the next programs are Social Security Survivor and Auxiliary Benefits. The surviving spouse, children, and parents of a deceased worker can draw benefits from the worker's work record. Or if someone is disabled and receiving Social Security Disability Insurance benefits, their spouse and children can also draw auxiliary benefits from their work record. Moving on to the next category, which is benefits for immigrants. Up first is CAPI, which provides benefits for non-citizens who are blind, disabled, or over 65. Basically, if you would be eligible for SSI, but for your immigration status, you're eligible for CAPI instead. And last program for this category is refugee cash assistance, which provides a cash benefit to refugees for up to 12 months from their date of admission to the US. And now we've come to the last category, which is for people who don't qualify for any other program we just went over. If that's the case, the last resort benefit program is called either general assistance or general relief, depending on the county you're in. These are 100% county funded programs. So the rules and benefits also differ from county to county, but generally the benefit is about $200 per month, and it's considered a loan that folks have to pay back if and when they get a job or other income. And then I'm just going to quickly go over the non-cash benefit programs I mentioned at the start. The first program is CalFresh, also widely known as food stamps. This program provides an EBT card that recipients can use to buy groceries. The income limit to be eligible for CalFresh is 200% of the federal poverty level, and most households are not subject to any resource or asset limits. The grant amount is based on household size, with the maximum allotment for one person being $281 per month. Okay, and then there are several programs that provide healthcare benefits. Covered California provides subsidies to help middle income households purchase private health insurance. Medi-Cal is free health coverage for low income people. 
IHSS or in-home supportive services is a program that provides in-home care services to help low-income people remain safely in their homes as opposed to being placed in institutional care like a nursing home. And then county indigent healthcare programs are programs operated by individual counties that these days generally serve to cover folks who fall through the cracks of health coverage. So that brings us to the end of our overview of all the benefit programs. And now I'm going to talk through an example case and then do a quick recap before we close. Okay, so our example case is about Mr. Mozzie, who is a 60 year old patient who has not been receiving regular medical care. He is currently unhoused, staying in shelters whenever he can get a spot, but he often sleeps outside. He currently has no income, but states he's been looking for a job for a while, although it's tough to find a job he can do because he experiences significant numbness and swelling in his legs when he is on his feet for more than a couple hours at a time. He wonders if it has something to do with his days at the Wonder Bread factory, where he worked for 24 years. He says that he was on his feet for long days every day at that job. He was laid off when the factory closed in 2012, and he hasn't been able to find another job since then. What income supports could Mr. Mozzie potentially be eligible for? So if you're following along, please pause here and take a few minutes to think through which categories we discussed that Mr. Mozzie might fall into. Okay, let's look at our list. It sounds like Mr. Mozzie might have a disability, so SSI might work. However, he mentioned that he worked for 24 years, so let's look at the programs for people with work history. First, let's consider unemployment. This is one that looks like it could work because he has a work history, a factory job is one that likely paid into the EDD system, and he was laid off through no fault of his own. However, he doesn't have sufficient earnings in the base period, which is generally the past 12 months, since he hasn't worked since the factory closed in 2012. So let's next look at Social Security retirement. This is another one that looks like it could work because he has significant work history, and a factory job is one that likely paid into the Social Security system. However, he's only 60, so he hasn't reached retirement age yet, either early retirement at 62 or full retirement at 66 or 67. So this won't help him yet, but you could tell him that he'll be eligible for retirement benefits in a couple years if he decides he wants to do early retirement. The next program is pensions. He worked for the Wonder Bread factory for 24 years. He very likely has a pension floating out there and could use assistance with tracking it down. This case example is actually based on a real life client who was unhoused and walked into a free medical clinic complaining of foot pain and offhandedly mentioned that he'd had a factory job a long time ago. And his legal aid attorney actually ended up being able to locate a $90,000 pension for him that he still had from that job. So it's really important to listen for those little details and step through those questions. So yes, in Mr. Mozzie's case, we should definitely explore a possible pension. Moving on to the next category, programs for people with disabilities and work history, I think this is the category that fits Mr. Mozzi best. So let's look at state disability insurance. Again, this looks like it could work because he probably has a disability that prevents him from working now and he has a work history. The problem here is the same with unemployment though. His work history is not recent enough to qualify for state disability insurance, so he won't have sufficient earnings in his base period, which again is generally the past 12 months. So then let's turn to Social Security Disability Insurance, and I think this is the best program for him if he can qualify as disabled. Mr. Mozzie has significant work history, paid into the Social Security system, and he is probably unable to work due to a disability. However, as I said before, the disability standard for Social Security is very stringent and can be really difficult to prove you have a qualifying disability. So this program is probably the best fit for his situation, but realistically, it will take a lot of time and work to get qualified. As a clinician, the best thing you can do for him is help him assess and document his health conditions and how they affect his ability to work and his medical records, and hopefully connect him with a social worker or other resource that can help him apply for Social Security Disability Insurance. If he's at a stage of needing legal assistance to appeal a denial of benefits, you could refer him to the local legal aid organization as well. While he's waiting to get on Social Security Disability Insurance, let's look at what else he could qualify for in the meantime. So the other benefit he could get on is general assistance or general relief. 
It's not a lot of money, but it's the only other cash benefit he might qualify for right now. And then in terms of non-cash benefits, since he has no other income right now, he should be eligible for food benefits through CalFresh and free health coverage through Medi-Cal. So to recap, for Mr. Mozzie, he could get on general assistance, CalFresh and Medi-Cal right away for a small cash grant, food benefits, and medical care. For the longer term, he can apply for Social Security Disability Insurance, understanding that that's a longer process to qualify. But in a couple of years, he'll at least be eligible for early Social Security retirement benefits. So that would be some income for him. And you can also refer him to a free pension assistance program for help with locating a pension from his past employment at the factory. So that completes our case example for Mr. Mozzie. And to close, I just want to reemphasize what you can do as a clinician is exactly what we just did in our case example. Listen for the buzz categories in your patient appointment, such as listening for disabilities or work history. Seek out local resources where you can refer people for further screening when you hear those buzz categories mentioned. And lastly, listen for any legal advocacy needs around those benefit programs. If your patient has already applied for or been on these benefits and experiences a negative action, like a denial or a termination of benefits, please refer them to your local legal aid for assistance. All of these benefit programs have appeal rights attached to them, and people should seek legal assistance to help them exercise those rights. So that brings us to the conclusion of this training brought to you by the Dementia Care Aware Project. Thank you for attending and for more information, please visit the Dementia Care Aware website at DementiaCareAware.org.